Does uneven cooking affect the quality of a brisket? I've always wondered this because top pitmasters like Aaron Franklin say that even cooking is very important. But does it really matter or are we babying our briskets too much? We're gonna find out in this video by cooking a couple briskets and I'm also going to be reviewing the new Typher Sync wireless probe, which I'm really excited about and giving you guys my honest thoughts on it. Typher, who is the sponsor for this video, just launched the new Typher Sync wireless probe thermometer and I'll be testing it out on the briskets I cook in this video. I've always been a huge fan of using wireless probes for smoking briskets because with one probe, I can measure the internal temperature of the brisket and also the ambient temperature to help with my fire management. And I'm super excited about the Typher Sync because it comes standard with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity built in, which means unlimited range, no more dropped connections anywhere in your house, and most importantly, no more pissing contests between wireless probe brands about who has the longest Bluetooth. It doesn't matter anymore as long as I have access to the internet, which is like 90 99% of the time. The Typher Sync also has a standalone display so you don't always have to look at your phone to see the temperature. It has predictive cooking that estimates when your meat will be done, which I tested and it's actually very accurate. And most impressively, the Sync has five internal temperature sensors so you're always getting a reading on the very coldest spot of the meat. You can visually see the temperature gradient bands to anticipate how fast the meat's cooking. You can also sear meat with it. It's small enough to fit in your pocket and it comes with two probes. So at its current price of $229, it's an absolute bargain for the value it provides, in my opinion. If you compare it to other probes on the market that have multiple internal sensors, then you could be paying over $300 to get two probes. And this comes built in with two probes, the five internal sensors, and it has great features like Wi-Fi connectivity built in. So at first glance, this thing looks like the new king of wireless probes on the market, and it would be if it weren't for one small thing related to the ambient sensor, which is kind of a pet peeve for me, but it's an issue with all wireless probes on the market, and I've tested them. I've tested nine different probes from eight different brands and they all have this issue, but more on that later. So let's talk about even cooking. It's really important when you cook something like a steak and this is really intuitive if you've ever cooked a steak before. You'll notice if you grill a steak super fast then you get a gradient band of overcooked meat on the outside and a little tiny bullseye of medium rare meat in the middle of the steak. And that's not really that great. We want our entire steak to be medium rare or whatever temperature you're shooting for. I personally like medium rare. So in order to do that, we use techniques like reverse searing where we low and slow cook the steak up to to an internal temperature of let's say 120 and then we finish it with a hot sear so that the steak cooks evenly, it's perfectly medium rare throughout and we get a nice crust on the outside. But brisket obviously is not like steak. We're taking a brisket up to 195 internal at least, so why does it really matter if our flat gets up to 195 internal while our point is still lagging behind at 150, let's say, it's all gonna get up to the same temperature anyway, so why would uneven cooking matter with a brisket? Well, a lot of pitmasters would really disagree with that line of reasoning, and they think that even cooking of a brisket is super important. For example, Aaron Franklin, in his book Franklin Smoke, says he spritzes the edges of the flat during the early stage of the cook to cool them down via evaporative cooling so the rest of the brisket can catch up and cook more evenly. And anecdotally, in my own experience, it seems to be that the briskets I cook more evenly tend to come out juicier and just better in general. But why would that be the case? Well, one hypothesis is that if we cook the exterior too quickly, then it can overpower the ability of the brisket to transport water to the surface and cool it down via evaporative cooling, which means the exterior bits of the meat can get well above the boiling point of water and temperature, and they get dried out and burnt. This is a long way of saying that even cooking matters because otherwise you're going to burn your meat. That's why Aaron Franklin recommends gradually ramping a brisket up in temperature, so starting at a low temperature, and then as the brisket starts sweating out more moisture, he increases the temperature in the smoker because it's better able to cool itself down and cook more evenly and handle that higher temperature. Another theory that I have is that if you unevenly cook your brisket, let's say you're cooking your flat a lot faster than your point during the early stages of a cook, you might really dry out the exterior of the flat and remove a lot of the moisture in the form of H2O that is required for all of the interconnective collagen to undergo hydrolysis and convert at least partially into gelatin. So by drying your brisket out earlier in the cook, you're inhibiting its ability to render that collagen and get super jiggly and juicy later on in the cook. But these are all kind of intuitive examples. Like obviously we don't want to burn our brisket. We don't want to dry out the flat too early in the cook because then the meat is going to be dry. What I'm more interested in is the more casual uneven cooking that happens during a brisket cook. Let's say at any given stage of your brisket cook, your flat is probing 20 degrees higher or lower than your point is probing. Does that unevenness of temperature matter to the end result? And would the end result have been better if all of those temperatures everywhere in the brisket had raised at the same rate? Kind of like what you would get when sous vide meat, for example. Or does it even matter at all? And if this really were the case, then it would explain a lot of kind of 
of inexplicable results that a lot of us get with brisket. We've all had situations where we get a brisket and it turns out dry and we have no idea why because we did everything right. But maybe because every single cooker is different and has hot spots and cold spots, you got too much top down heat to the point and you undercooked the flat during the early stage of the cook. So they weren't rising in temperature at the same rate. And then at the end of the cook, when you finally probe it for temperature, you find that everything is 195 degrees anyway. So you don't even know that that happened during the early stage of the cook, but it could have had some sort of impact on the final quality of your brisket. You would just never know. Or this is a really common one. What if the very tip of the flat, which is really thin, is cooking 30 to 40 degrees higher in temperature than the rest of the brisket and especially the point, but you either foil boat it or you wrap it partway through the cook and everything comes up to 195 anyway. So you don't really know it was cooking faster, but nonetheless, because it was unevenly cooking, it has an effect on the final product and it's not going to be as juicy. And that would explain why things like rotating your brisket throughout the cook would help your brisket come out more juicier because it's helping it cook more evenly. It would explain why things like wrapping your brisket partway through the cook, let's say when you hit 170 or 180 degrees internal, is helping the brisket become more juicy. Yes, it's increasing the humidity and the wet bulb temperature of the brisket, so it's helping it to retain moisture, but maybe it's also cooking the brisket more evenly and that's also helping. And it might also explain why you can cook a brisket over hot coals as long as it's on a rotisserie and constantly rotating because it's cooking evenly. This is the stuff that I really love exploring. All of the hidden variables that make brisket so challenging. And if we could just understand them a little bit more then maybe just maybe we could cook better briskets. So to test out the effects of uneven cooking, I'm going to cook two choice grade briskets, one really evenly and one really unevenly. For the evenly cooked brisket, we'll call this the control brisket. I'm slathering it with some soy sauce for extra flavor and to help the rub stick. This brisket has been sitting on my counter overnight, so it should be around 60 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit to help it cook more evenly in this video, instead of the typical 40 degrees when you take it right out of the fridge, which can promote uneven cooking. I'm now rubbing it with my Smoke Trails BBQ brisket rub. This rub is designed to go on super heavy for maximum bark and texture, and it has some next level ingredients in it to really make each slice of brisket pop with color and flavor. There's some sumac in it, which is a dried berry that helps darken up the bark, and it also has some flavor bomb ingredients like beef base powder, MSG, and grilled meat flavoring. It's unlike any brisket rub I've ever tried before and I'm really proud of it. So buy it, try it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. It's now available in the US and Canada on Amazon. Now I'm lighting up my Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn Offset Smoker and using a new toy called the Sear Pro Multi-Purpose Torch. I'm really liking it so far. It's super powerful and lights up my firebox almost instantly. It's kind of shorter so I can use it for lighting fires or searing steaks if I want to. And best of all, it's very affordably priced. I'm liking it so far, so I'm going to link it in the description section below if you guys want to check it out. Now, I'm placing the control brisket on the Oklahoma Joe's, point to the firebox with a water pan to the right. The water pan does deflect some heat under the brisket, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it evens out the heat hitting the top and bottom and helps it cook more evenly. However, I will remove it later in the cook because at that point, I'm going to foil boat the brisket, so it's really braising in its own juices, and those juices are cooking it from the bottom up, and I want maximum top-down heat during the late stages of the cook to properly render the fat cap. Now I'm firing up the Typher Sink. It has a really handy standalone display and I really like the design because it's nice and sleek and compact enough to fit in my pocket. It kind of reminds me of like an iPhone because the exterior shell is made of metal and it just has a nice heavy quality feel. I'm removing one probe and sticking it in the flat and the second probe I'm sticking it into the point so I'll be able to monitor how evenly the point and flat are cooking compared to each other. I'm going to cook this brisket at around 200 to 215 degrees for a few hours and then I'm gonna ramp it up slowly over time to really help it cook more evenly. And looking at the sink display, the point is 62 degrees and the flat is 64 degrees, which is perfect. Leaving it out overnight gave us a bit of a head start on the temperature and it should help it cook more evenly. Now, moving on to the experimental unevenly cooked brisket. I'm rubbing it the same way as the control brisket, but this one just came out of the fridge, which means it's a little bit colder. It's around 40 degrees, which theoretically means it's going to cook less evenly when we put it on the smoker. I'm now lighting up my old country pits gen 2 offset smoker with my sear pro torch. I start with a really big fire and then I burn it down to coals because it does take a little bit more time to get this heavier fully insulated firebox up to temperature. But once I've got a coal bed and the insulated firebox is warmed up, 
I just add super tiny splits and it works great. I find if I add bigger splits to this thing and don't really watch it, it can easily spike up to 600 or 700 degrees in the cook chamber. So this thing is super efficient. It uses half the amount of fuel that I use on uninsulated fireboxes. And I'm liking it so far. I'm gonna do a full review later on in the year. Now I'm placing the experimental unevenly cooked brisket on the Old Country Pits Gen 2. You can see I'm also using a water pan to tame the radiant heat a little bit. Now I'm placing two probes from a second Typher sink into the point and the flat. And I'm gonna cook this guy at 300 degrees so I'm starting at a really high temperature again to cook it more unevenly. A few hours in the control evenly cooked brisket is up to around 100 and 109 in the point and the flat. Not bad I'm trying to keep them within 10 degrees of each other so I'm going to rotate the flat to the fire to help close that gap and cook it more evenly. You can see the ambient reading is 209 degrees on the firebox facing probe. In reality the true ambient temperature in that area is around 225 degrees. This is what I was mentioning in the beginning of the video about ambient temperature issues which again is a problem with all remote probes on the market specifically in the high airflow up and down temperature swing environment of an offset smoker. The ambient sensor is totally Totally accurate in most circumstances. I confirmed it within a degree of accuracy in both an ice bath and a boiling water bath and I tested it in my holding oven which held a very consistent 250 degrees temperature. The Typher was within one degree of the true ambient temperature which is very impressive, a lot better than other probes I've tested. So I think in your oven or a Kamado smoker or a low airflow environment with very steady temperatures this thing is going to be bang on accurate but in an offset smoker with temperature fluctuations up and down you tend to get heat piping from the probe being connected to the cold meat. You get interference from the boundary layer of cooler evaporating moisture next to the meat. And lastly, the insulation around the ambient sensor makes it less responsive to temperature changes. So all of this means that in an offset smoker, you're gonna get less temperature responsiveness than let's say a wired probe with a much thinner probe and much less insulation between it and the thermocouple that actually measures the temperature. As I said before, I've tested wireless probes from the eight biggest brands on the market right now. And the Typher Sync actually does a really good job compared to most most of them. But it still skews about 15 degrees low in an offset smoker and you might get even worse accuracy depending on how bad your temperature swings are in your offset smoker. There's a couple things you can do to get more accurate temperature. You can pull the ambient sensor further out of the meat far enough away so that it's not affected by the boundary layer of evaporating moisture around it. It's a couple inches away but far enough in the meat so you're not exposing the internal sensors too much so they're going to overheat. You could also just pay more attention to your fire management. The more even temperatures you get the more accurate this thing is going to be because the more time the ambient sensor has to come to an equilibrium and give you the accurate ambient reading and as the cook progresses this is the same case with all wireless probes on the market the ambient sensor tends to get more accurate as the meat heats up because you're getting less heat piping that's taking the heat from the ambient sensor and piping it down to the cold meat when the meat heats up you get less of that so if you choose to use the typher sink for fire management and temperature control in your offset smoker then i really recommend that you test it out first you see how many degrees off is it and then adjust manually. So if it's 15 degrees low, then every time you look at the ambient reading, just adjust it 15 degrees in your head and you'll have the perfect temperature. It's similar to what you do with a dome thermometer. The dome thermometers on most smokers are notoriously inaccurate because they're not measuring the temperature at great level. Usually they're about 25 to 50 degrees off depending on the smoker. I know that in a lot of my offsets, the dome thermometer is about 25 degrees higher than great level. So when I'm relying on the dome thermometer, which is totally okay to do, I just subtract 25 from whatever it reads and then I'll know the true ambient temperature. But again, if you're cooking in something like a WSM or a Kamado or Masterbuilt Electric smoker that has super low airflow and pretty even temperatures, you're probably gonna get accurate readings with this probe. Now, additionally, there are two minor pet peeves I have about the Typher Sync. The first one is that if you end your cook early, so you cancel your cook, it doesn't save your cook data and your temperature graph. So you actually have to go in manually and edit the temperature down so that it's finished and then it'll save your temperature graph. The other thing is in Bluetooth only mode, so you're not using Wi-Fi at all, it does not graph and save your temperatures. So you can't read the graph and see the trends of your temperature going up and down. You can only see what the temperature is at any given time when you look at your phone or the manual display, which is slightly annoying. If you don't have Wi-Fi, like you're at a barbecue competition or you're camping or something like that, you can't really see the temperature trends. And to a lot of people, including myself, that's important, especially in a barbecue competition. But again, 99% of the time, you're probably 
probably gonna be using this with Wi-Fi, so you're gonna have that temperature graphing information. It's not gonna matter too much. Other than that, I'm really loving the Typer Sync. The standalone display means I don't always need to use my phone, so I love that. But if you do need to use your phone, it connects to Wi-Fi, so I never get a dropped connection and I get unlimited range. Just keep in mind, it does only connect to 2.4 gigahertz uh, internet connections, so if you only have 5G in your house, you'll have to call your internet service provider, get a second 2.4 gigahertz network set up, and usually they do that for free or it's not that much extra money. And if all else fails, it does have excellent Bluetooth range. Typher claims that they have 400 feet of wireless Bluetooth range in the open, so no obstacles in between the probe and the standalone display and your phone. And that's a true story. I tested it and it got 400 feet almost exactly a perfect range with no drop connections. And then it was kind of spotty and intermittent between 400 and 450, but sometimes I could even get a pretty decent connection all the way up to 450 feet. They also say it gets 65 feet of range through obstacles, which I think is a lot more honest than other probes that are marketing their wireless range right now. Personally, with other wireless probes, I don't even get 30 feet by the time the signal comes through the smoker, through a couple walls, and gets to me maybe 30 feet away sitting on the couch while I'm checking my temperature on my phone. But this thing in my house with the particular obstacles in between the signal and my phone in different areas of my house, it gets about 55 feet of range. So it's pretty close to the 65 that they're claiming. But it's kind of a moot point because it has Wi-Fi and that's what I'm always connected to. So I get unlimited range and I don't have to worry about the Bluetooth range. And it's pretty impressive because Typher is basically saying with this product that you get unlimited range through Wi-Fi. So you don't have to worry about drop connection as long as you have access to the internet. And even if you don't have internet, we're still better than most other probes at Bluetooth range, which I think is really impressive. It's the next day, guys, and I'm rocking the OG Smoke Trails apron. This is the first apron that I ever made for my channel back when it was about like hunting your own meat and smoking meat until I got really into barbecue. Let's take a look at these briskets. So this is the control brisket. This is the brisket that we cooked really evenly. The flat and the point came up in temperature relatively evenly throughout the entire cook. I took it to 195, I held it for about 18 hours. This is normally how I cook most of my briskets. I did rotate this brisket frequently. I put an ice pack on the flat at one point just to allow the point to kind of catch up to it because the flat was getting a little bit higher in temperature. And in general, it was a pretty good cook. Just looking at this thing, the burnt ends don't look that crispy. I mean, there's some dry bits here, but those will be burnt ends. Over here, there's this big chunk of fat that is kind of partially rendered. There's this little tip here, and that's not feeling too bad. It might be a little bit dried out. And just feeling around the flat, the tip of the flat is I mean, it's a little bit tough, but it's not bad. The real test is when we cut into it. So let's give this guy a slice. And I'll give you guys a look. A lot of seam fat there, but it's looking really juicy. In general, it's pretty good brisket. If you look at the fat cap, there's a lot of that yellow rendering up top. There's a little bit of white unrendered fat with this big deposit right here, but that's okay. Let's get a flat slice here. So there's the flat, guys. It's actually looking quite nice. It looks juicy. It doesn't look overcooked at all. You can see how the grains are very tight together. I'm just pulling them apart just ever so slightly, and it just falls apart. The little bit of the point on top of this slice here, even though it's not cut against the grain, it just falls apart effortlessly. So I think this brisket's gonna be pretty good, but let's give her a taste. That's exactly how I like my briskets. The flat is juicy. It's still retained a lot of its beef flavor. It's more prime ribby and steaky in texture than the overcooked dry pot roasty texture that you get on a lot of briskets. So I'm happy with the flat on this brisket. Let's check the very tip of the flat though. So very tip of the flat. I remember in my very first video that I ever made cooking brisket, I started slicing from the very end of the flat and everyone was like, your brisket's so dry, but Usually the tip of the flat is dry. <laughs> so that's why now I start cutting in the very center of the brisket. But in this case, this flat is actually really nice. Really juicy all the way throughout. Sometimes you get more of a beef jerky dried out texture on the very tip. And I just kind of throw it away if I get that. But in this case, it's quite nice. I'd actually serve this up. Now let's take a look at the point. I'll just cut away the burnt ends here. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper because this looks like it got a little bit dried out, but we're gonna find out. So you can see that it's tearing a little bit, which kind of concerns me. So if you look here, looks like it's a little bit dry. So it got some heat 
probably during the last part of the cook when I was pushing temperatures and I probably pushed the temperatures a little bit too high. Still quite good, really smoky, a lot of flavor. I'd probably serve it up as burnt ends. Now let's keep going here. I'll just go about four slices in. So that's one, get that guy out of the way. Two, three and slice number four. And I'll give you guys a look. So you can see that the fat cap is rendered down all the way to the meat, looks great. The collagen looks pretty well rendered. The muscle fibers are really tight together. So that's a good sign that it's probably not gonna be overcooked. If we pull it apart, it pulls apart really easily. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, mm. really tasty. The collagen is really well rendered. The fat cap is rendered all the way down. So it's very caramelly, sweet, savory. The rub has integrated fully with the bark. It is a really nice bite and it still has a little bit of beef flavor too because we didn't overcook it. We only took it to 195. And last but not least, the flat underneath the point slices. Mm-hmm. Just how I like it. It's got that sweet beef flavor. It's not overcooked, super juicy, love it. So this is a very nice brisket, very representative of how most of my briskets turn out using the method that I use. Now let's take a look at the unevenly cooked brisket, just probing around the edges here. It's actually a little bit softer than the control brisket. And the reason for that is because I didn't take it as high in temperature before I wrapped it because this one was lagging behind like crazy. So it spent more time wrapped as it was cooking. A Little bit tough around the flat, especially this tip right here. The tip seems like it's uh, pretty dry, but overall, I mean, it looks pretty jiggly. Let's see what it tastes like. Give you guys a look. I mean, that looks really, really juicy. I got no complaints about that at all. Let's take a slice of the flat here. Actually a really nice looking flat. Pulls apart effortlessly. Let's see how it tastes. I'm just comparing it to a bite of the other flat. So it is really good. Still really good. It does have more of that pot roasty flavor in the flat though, a little bit overcooked for my taste, but it is really good. It's juicy from all of the extra collagen rendering and all of the extra rendering from the fat. So I would serve this brisket up. It's really good. It's just not a perfect flat. It just has that bland pot roasty flavor in the flat. So let's go into the point here. And I think this was one of the briskets I actually flattened. I've started experimenting with flattening my briskets to help them cook more evenly because a lot of times the point will stick way up. So I actually started using a bat and I cover the end of it with saran wrap and then I just beat the F out of the brisket until it's flat. And it seems to be working pretty well actually. The point comes down quite a bit when you shape the meat like that. Otherwise this point would have been sticking way up. You also get nicer slices. Like look at how beautiful those slices are. So I think there might be something to it guys, just hitting your brisket with a bat repeatedly to tame it into the correct shape. Might be onto something here. So, okay, I can already tell. This looks like a slice you would get at a Texas barbecue restaurant. It's very, very ooey gooey and it didn't even like soak in any of the tallow there. This is just from the meat itself. The fat cap is rendered almost all the way down. It does have some white spots in areas that I didn't trim as much off, but that's pretty typical. And then, you know, as we pull it apart, it's just like so effortless. I think I'm gonna like this one a lot. Mmm. Oh baby. Super good. That's the best point slice I've had out of both these briskets. However, I didn't like the flat on this brisket. I liked the flat on the control brisket a lot better. It's more juicy, it had more beef flavor. So I've talked a lot about this in the past. I tend to undercook my briskets and then hold them for a long period of time. I get a decent point. It's rendered enough. It's got good flavor. Nobody complains about it, but it's not as good as taking your point up to 200 degrees probe tender at that higher temperature. The disadvantage when taking your brisket up to that higher temperature though, is that the flat tends to come out a little bit drier, more pot roasty. The texture's just off and it's not as good as when you 
kind of undercook your brisket, just take it to 195 and then hold it overnight for a really long time. But for a bunch of other reasons, including the flat turning out better and convenience, I like the 195 and hold method. But some people like taking their briskets up to probe tenderness. It's all just a matter of what you're trying to optimize, the point or the flat or your time. And now finally, let's take a look at the very tip of the flat here, very tip. I'll give you guys a look. Let's see how it pulls apart. Seems quite dry and burnt, actually. Ugh. Yeah, and it is, it's like beef jerky. I wouldn't serve that up. In fact, I'd probably cut even more of the flat off. I'd probably cut around this much of it off. And I'd maybe even go a little bit further because the tip of the flat is looking a little bit dry. And that's what happens when you cook a brisket unevenly. The very tip of the flat gets super dry. So conclusions for this video, it's very hard to make general conclusions off of one test. And there were lots of variables that were not extremely well controlled. For example, I unevenly cooked this brisket, but at the end I had to put it into my holding oven to take it up to 195 and then drop it back down in temperature because I had to go to bed. This brisket in total cooked like 15 hours before I put it in the holding oven and then another three hours there rising in temperature to 195 to get done. So what can we conclude for uneven cooking? Well, the first and most obvious thing is that it extends the length of your brisket cook considerably. It's much better to cook your brisket more evenly because everything is gonna cook faster. The second really noticeable thing was that the flat, in particular the very tip of the flat, was very dry. It was much more dry in comparison to the control brisket, which we cooked more evenly. So try to protect that flat by flipping your brisket around, help it to come up in temperature in lockstep with the rest of the brisket. If you're cooking and the very tip of the flat starts to get away from you in temperature, then you can rotate it to the colder side of the smoker. You could try spritzing the edges, maybe with ice water even, to cool that down and really help the rest of the brisket catch up. You could try foiling it. You could do what I did in this video and put an ice pack over it for maybe 30 minutes to an hour to really help it come down to temperature and let the rest of the brisket catch up. That seemed to be pretty effective. But other than those two things, I would say that the biggest takeaway for me from this experiment was that the method that you use to finish your brisket and the way that you finish your brisket has a much larger impact on the overall quality of your brisket than how evenly it cooked. For example, just because you cooked your brisket really evenly throughout the entire cook, it doesn't mean that the brisket's gonna be perfect if you overcook it. If you take it up to like 205, 207 degrees and you just melt your brisket, it's still gonna be super dry even though you cooked it evenly. So you really have to be paying attention and pull it at the right temperature for the technique that you're using. Another example is if you wrap your brisket earlier in the cook, I mean, it's gonna come out a little bit more juicy and with less burnt edges than if you leave the brisket unwrapped the entire time. So this experiment taught me to definitely pay attention to the evenness of cooking of my briskets, but there's definitely more important things to focus on that are going to have much more of an impact on the final quality of your brisket. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video, and until then, happy smoking.